Jeffrey Epstein was a billionaire New York businessman whose vast wealth bought an arrogance that knew no limits. Damn the consequences, he acted as if he could have anything he craved. But what he desired most was sex with young women and girls. For years, he abused them at will. And such were the numbers of victims Epstein exploited, he started trading them around the world. He masterminded a sex trafficking ring which enabled his rich and influential friends and associates to share in his perversion. Remarkably, those accused of complicity in this scandal include His Royal Highness Prince Andrew. Tonight, you'll hear shocking stories from very brave women demanding justice. Among them, Virginia Roberts Jufre, who stumbled into a dark and insidious world she had no power to escape until she found sanctuary in Australia. As a young child, Virginia's life was all about horses and climbing trees, more a tomboy than a princess. But then at seven, she was repeatedly sexually abused by a family friend. By 13, she had fallen victim to two other pedophiles. My life just changed and it, it diminished that light that was in me. At 16, Virginia was emerging from the darkness, landing a job as a locker room attendant at an exclusive resort in Florida. But what Virginia couldn't know was that in 1999, her past would make her perfect prey for Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's partner and procurer of young girls. She just seemed very nice and she said, I've got a person that I know who's actually looking for a traveling masseuse. And uh, if you want, I can get you an interview with him. If he likes you, we can get you educated. You'll be a real masseuse. And you'll get to travel and see the world. And, and you know, like she made it sound like it was a dream come true, and it wasn't. Instead, it was a trap. But trustingly, Virginia told the couple of her past abuse. This was as Galen was teaching her how to massage Epstein here at his Palm Beach Island home. That was, for them, the key that unlocked the door to um, knowing how broken I really was. How quickly did they act on that? Well, so put it this way, we did the back of him, we did the back of Epstein, and then when he turned over, um, that's when I was instructed to, um, to, that's when I was instructed to um, get undressed and, um, and have sex with Jeffrey Epstein while Gielan Maxwell was participating as well. You want to take a moment? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. So you were abused by both of them in your very first encounter? Yeah, with both them. of them. I was abused by Gielan and Epstein. At 14, I was still in middle school. I was straight-A student, never even got a B. I played the first chair trumpet. I was the captain of the cheerleading squad. And then after I met Jeffrey, I just completely quit. This is where you yeah. were living for a while? Yes, this is where I was living when I met Jeffrey Epstein. Courtney Wilde was just 14 when she met the 48-year-old Epstein in 2001. At the time, she was living in this trailer park, one of West Palm Beach's poorest communities. Do you believe that Jeffrey Epstein targeted areas like this? Yeah, definitely targeted, you know, children like myself that were vulnerable to him and his money. And um, we felt like we were being helped and saved by him when ultimately he was just preying on us. Just 12 kilometres away, another world awaited Courtney, the luxurious Palm Beach Island home of Epstein. She was brought here by another 14-year-old to make much-needed cash. What were you expecting to happen? What, why did you think you were coming here? Well, I knew that I was coming here to give a guy a massage and to make $200. I did know that. 
Um, it was never told to me that I would be molested by this man or anything like that. Inside, Courtney very quickly discovered the massage was just a cover for something far more sinister. We were taken upstairs. It was like a circular stairwell that led to a hallway that led to his bedroom, which the massage table was in his bedroom bathroom. You know, he asked us to get comfortable, to just, you know, take our clothes off, to be in our bra and panties. Were you abused during that session? And so we would massage him for about 30 minutes, and then whenever he was ready, you know, rolled over and asked the person that brought me to go downstairs and wait. And once that happened, then that's when the sexual abuse happened, yes. You're 14 and in a completely alien situation, an incomprehensible position. How did you react? I just remember afterwards how I felt walking down the stairs and I just felt so dirty and so, um, like just like a piece of me had been taken. Dirty, I felt, it was like my dirty little secret, you know? Jeffrey Epstein was the master of manipulation, luring poverty-stricken girls in with cash and feeding their dreams of a better life. By the time the sexual abuse began, many were too invested in his promises to get out. So you know I have to ask this, why, why did you go back? As an adult, I know it's right to run, but as a kid, who had been through what I had been through in my life already, I guess the last thought that I had was, well, this is what life's about. Epstein's desire for sex was insatiable, demanding at least three different girls a day to massage him and in return be molested. In a perverted pyramid scheme, Epstein would pay extra for his victims to find more girls for him, the younger, the better. You could tell his addiction wasn't drugs or alcohol, it was definitely young girls. And if I couldn't bring him a girl, when he didn't get his obsession, he just would get so mad. How many girls do you think you brought to Jeffrey Epstein? Um, I would say at the minim minimum 50, but anywhere from 50 to 70 girls. And what were their ages? The same ages of me, um, 14, 15, 16. You know, I just hold a lot of guilt and shame for doing those things. And just to know that I had any influence on that happening to somebody else, just, you know, it really, it's just devastating and breaks my heart. Did Jeff know anybody's real true age or he didn't care? I don't think he cared. He told me the younger the better. These are just some of the girls from Palm Beach who were lured into Epstein's evil web. He asked me to take my shirt off, so I took my shirt off. Their young voices retelling a police officer of chillingly similar encounters with the businessman. He started getting a little excited a lot and he started touching himself. Despite these girls' testimony in 2005, Jeffrey Epstein would go on to abuse and scar countless more young girls. That he got away with it is a disgrace. How he did so is even worse. Why did this man get to continue roam the streets freely and sexually abuse other young girls when you knew what he was doing? This was no secret. Jeffrey Epstein was a man made of money, worth nearly a billion dollars. Look up to the sky, boy. But with friends in high places, he was not only wealthy, but extraordinarily influential. He was a sex trafficker, a sex abuser, and he was virtually untouchable. One of his young victims, Virginia Roberts Dufre, experienced and witnessed the depravity too many times. This is New York, this is Palm Beach, this is California, this is Paris, this is... London, this is wherever Epstein was touching down. He needed to have girls on constant call. In every single state or every place that he goes to, he's already got people lined up and makers making that happen. Allegedly, part of the sick Epstein machine was Jean-Luc Brunel, a model agent based in Paris 
with access to beautiful young girls, girls he was happy to deliver to Epstein. Girls ranged in all different ages. I mean, there were girls as young as 12. You have no doubt he was having sex with a 12-year-old. I was told by him that he was having sex with three 12-year-olds sent by Jean-Luc Brunel. And Jeffrey laughed about it. He laughed. He thought it was funny. This is not just a story of terrible sexual abuse, but also an extraordinary abuse of power, where the enormous wealth and influence of Jeffrey Epstein would prove to have the ultimate say, where justice was not just ignored, but deliberately denied by the very people who were meant to stop him. Every single institution in our society that is supposed to protect the vulnerable failed these survivors. David Boies is one of America's most prominent New York lawyers. He's representing nine Epstein victims, including Virginia, in their fight to hunt down those who were a part of Epstein's sex trafficking ring, the scope and scale of which is mind-boggling. For all the, the wealth and the glamour and the, you know, the beautiful mansion right, and the yes. gorgeous island, I mean, this was tawdry. This was right. dark, yes, this was very it's, ugly. It's a, it's a dark, ugly uh, situation. Um, and, um, you know, behind the facade of charm and sophistication, it's like turning over a rock and you just see the things crawling. Uh, it was a, it, it was bad. Within nine months of meeting Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, Virginia was being flown halfway around the world to have sex with Epstein's wealthy associates. A little girl amongst a sea of men. I was a baby stuck in a world where grown-ups were allowed to do whatever they wanted. And I was lost. And were you trafficked that night? Yeah, I was trafficked that night. And so began Virginia's new life, still on call for Epstein, but also for any friend he chose. I was trafficked to other billionaires. I was trafficked to um, politicians, uh, professors, even royalty. It was, it was the elite of the world. It was the people who run the world. It was the most powerful people in the world. Why do you think Epstein did that to you? He used me as a form of blackmail. So, you know, these people would owe him favors. So he wanted to always have something on someone just in case he needed it. Virginia has named the men she was trafficked to in documents lodged with the courts. The name that has caused the greatest splash is Prince Andrew. The pair captured in this now infamous photograph taken in 2001. So as you know, Prince Andrew denies the allegations against him. And he says that this photo is a fake, that he was never there, and that he's not his arm, and they're not his fingers. Those are his fingers. That is Andrew. This photo has been verified as an original, and it's been since given to the FBI, and they've never contested that it's a fake. And I know it's real. And he needs to stop with all of these lame excuses. We're sick of hearing it. This is a real photo. And that was the first time you met him? And that's the very first time I met him. And that's right before I was abused by him. Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell took the 17-year-old Virginia to London to party with Prince Andrew. Then we went to Club Tramp and he danced with me and, and he sweats a lot and he smells funny. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then we get in the car and um, Gillen tells me in the car that I have to do what I do for Jeffrey for Prince Andrew. And that's when I learned what was going to happen. How many times were you trafficked to him? Three times. While Prince Andrew denies the allegations, Virginia maintains she's telling the truth. After the encounter in London, she says she had sex with him again at Epstein's New York mansion, where she was seen in his company by this witness, Joanna Schoberg, another victim. Schoberg claims Prince Andrew groped her breast that night. 
The final time Virginia was trafficked to Prince Andrew was here on Epstein's private island in the Caribbean. Was it just you and him in that, at that time? No, there, there were a lot of younger girls with us. How many young women with you that day or night? I believe there were eight. Did you have any conversations with Prince Andrew during those encounters? Not really. You're not even acknowledged as being alive or there or important or, or cared for or worried about in any way. None of those human emotions were attached to, to me when I was trafficked to Prince Andrew. What about your emotions when, when you learnt, you know, after the first time, that it was to happen a second time and then it was to happen a third time? What was your reaction to that? Disgusted every time. Just absolutely disgusted. Um, there wasn't one time that I was trafficked to any individual that I thought, oh, he's an okay guy. No, I'm, uh, I was always disgusted that there were so many people involved in this highly organized sex trafficking operation. Prince Andrew. Yes. Denies Virginia's allegations. Prince Andrew says he was unaware of uh, the sex trafficking. Uh, but he spent days in Epstein's New York mansion where the sex trafficking was rampant. You could not spend time there and not know what was going on. Lawyer David Boys has written to Prince Andrew asking for his side of the story with no response. But whether it's voluntary or forced, David Boys is certain Prince Andrew will have to answer for his friendship with Epstein. At some point, he's going to have to face the music. At some point, he's going to have to uh, testify. Um, he can't hide forever. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I I'm, mean, he's, um, a, he, you know, he, he's a very powerful man from a very powerful family, and it doesn't seem like the UK authorities are at all interested in pursuing him. No, and if he wants to stay, you know, locked up, you know, in a palace, um, and not travel outside the UK. Um, maybe he can escape um, a reckoning. I mean, he can't travel to the United States without um, being prepared to testify. Is that the case right now, that he can't come to the United States without... Well, he can come to the United States, but if he comes to the United States, he could be served with a subpoena. He could be, but yes. would he be? I think that's quite likely. I mean, at a minimum, he's a witness. Um, I mean, even if, even if people were not suing him directly, at a minimum, he is an important witness. So I think if he came to the United States now, it is quite likely that he would be uh, served with process. Why did you keep going back if you didn't want to go back? Okay. Jeffrey Epstein could have been stopped a decade and a half ago. I don't know what to do. I was afraid that he was going to harm my family. His murky massage ruse, enabled by inducement and intimidation, was uncovered when a 14-year-old victim finally told her parents about the abuse. He made threats, bad things would happen if I told him first. For this alone, he could and should have been sent to jail for life. But no one counted on the reach of Epstein's influence. We had no idea who this person was at the time, um, anything about him. We advised her that she needed to go to police and to tell her story to police. Palm Beach lawyer Spencer Coven was shocked by what police uncovered back in 2005 after raiding Epstein's home. It wasn't just one girl. In the end, they had testimony from 40 victims whose average age ranged from 13 to 16. We were able to amass a whole wealth of evidence. We knew it all. Amongst them were damning message pads, clearly showing a trade in young girls, scheduling them for massage appointments. He has a teacher for you, to teach you how to speak Russian. She is two times eight years old, not blonde. Lessons are free, and you can have your first today if you call. 
As well, flight logs showing girls being transported aboard Jeffrey's private plane, dubbed the Lolita Express. As compelling as the case was, Epstein fought back, using intimidation as his main weapon. He had multiple people that were out there really digging up dirt on not only the victims, but also the lawyers, the police, everyone involved. Have you ever come across something like that before? Never. Getting investigators to investigate the investigators? Everybody, yep. Did it work? Did he scare people away? Yeah, it definitely worked, sadly. This is a man that's now dead and they're still afraid to come forward. But ultimately, there was too much evidence for authorities to ignore. They had to act. But Epstein, with an army of lawyers, negotiated a slap on the wrist and a slap in the face for victims. Instead of admitting to child sex abuse, Epstein agreed to plead guilty to a lesser charge of soliciting a minor for prostitution. And in 2008, was sentenced to a mere 18 months in a Florida jail. They basically turned victims into um, prostitutes. These were girls with absolutely no history and no past. Um, to brand them that in a plea with him was just, for lack of a better term, disgusting. He was a pedophile accusing his victims of being prostitutes. He turned the tables yes. completely. Absolutely. This is where Jeffrey Epstein served his sentence, but really, he only slept here. If Epstein had been your average sex offender, he would have automatically been denied work release. But instead, being Epstein, he was allowed out six and then seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Driven by chauffeur to his downtown office, where it's said he was attended to by two young victims he flew in from New York. Back here at the jail, the special treatment extended to being housed in his own private wing, protected by his own private bodyguards. So for Jeffrey Epstein, this prison sentence was pretty much business as usual. Throughout this whole case, there's never been justice. And it started back in 2008 with the secret um, plea deal that Jeffrey was offered by the state of Florida. Apart from his light prison sentence, no one knew what else Epstein had negotiated in his secret Florida deal. It turned out he'd wrangled full immunity against any other charges for himself and his co-conspirators. The final outrage, victims like Courtney Wilde were never to be told of the deal. How do you feel about that? to be sexually abused by a man and have the government know and then actually, you know, co-conspire with the perpetrator to make sure nothing happens with to him is just so, it just sounds unreal. It, it does, it, except it is real. Mm -hmm, except it is real. And it happened to you plus a whole heap of other women. Right. Why do you think the government did that? money, power, and I think that there was a lot of people involved in this, um, this underage minor sex ring that they were running, and I think everybody wanted it to go away. So you believe that there was a conspiracy at play here? Oh, absolutely. What is your view of authorities signing up to that, that they, they're happy to protect a perpetrator at the cost of the victims. They won't even tell the victims what's going on. Yeah, it was astonishing at the time, but I know for a fact that the directive to shut it down came from the highest levels from DC. With Epstein out of jail and with no criminal avenue left to them, victims could only sue for damages. Do you soundly swear the testimony about to give away the truth, the whole truth? In pursuing Epstein, attorney Spencer Coven was intent on rattling the businessman. Could you please give us your name? Jeffrey Epstein. Who, until now, had been largely untouchable. Is it true, sir, that um, you have what's been described as an egg-shaped penis? Form, vague and definite, and I'm going to give you the, the first warning, Mr. Cuban. It's a killer first question. What was your second question going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my strategy at the time was that they wanted him to know that as a lawyer on behalf of the victims, I didn't care who he was. I didn't care how rich he was. I didn't care who he knew. 
uh, or how powerful he was. Was that question based on evidence? It was. My position was always, how would a 14-year-old girl know what his private parts look like? You know, it, it, there is no valid explanation for something like that. At the time of this humiliation for Epstein, Courtney Wilde was demanding some answers too, which led to her uncovering the secret deal between prosecutors and Epstein. Ever since, she's been fighting to have the deal overturned. Basically, it took 11 years litigating back and forth with the government for them to, you know, finally declare that, yes, my rights were violated and um, the government was wrong. Earlier this year, Courtney won her case. Keeping the plea deal from the victims was declared illegal. But the rest of it, where Epstein's co-conspirators are protected in Florida by immunity, stands. Something Courtney is now appealing. Justice needs to be served. People need to be held accountable. It's not okay to sexually abuse anybody. And so for the past 11 years, I've just been fighting to get that message across that it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you have money or not, um, you don't deserve to be treated that way. Do you feel like you're being heard? Yeah. <laughs> um, so why are you crying? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do. I do finally feel like I'm being heard, and it's, it's, a, good, it's a good cry, you know? And I, I take pride in that because it's intimidating to go against um, somebody of such power and wealth. Um, but, yeah, I do feel like my voice is being heard. By 2009, Jeffrey Epstein had served his sentence in Florida, an extraordinarily lax and lenient 13 months, when he could have faced 45 years for his crimes. With his luxury properties and private planes, he travelled when and where he wanted. And old friend Prince Andrew reconnected with him, despite his sex offender status. What do you think when you see that photo? I mean, they're just two of a like mind, you know? They both love having sex with young women. They both think that they can get away with everything, um, that they're above society, and, you know, for a long time, Jeffrey was. He proved it, didn't he? Virginia Roberts Dufre says she was a victim of both men. Her lawyer, David Boys, says she was also a victim of a system prepared to let Epstein get away with it. The secret sweetheart deal in Florida, proof that these young women counted for nothing. And that's one of the most, one of the most disturbing and, and really uh, shameful things, um, that uh, people who should have known better, did know better, uh, turned a blind eye and, uh, and just let him continue. But Epstein didn't count on the anger of his victims. When they found out about the secret deal, they took further legal action, which in turn led to the federal authorities reopening the case. What Florida didn't have the stomach to do, New York certainly did. And so on July 6th of this year, Jeffrey Epstein was again arrested and charged. But this time he faced the prospect of life behind bars. I never thought it was going to happen. I honestly thought he was just going to continue to get away with it over and over and over again, just like he proved so many times. Um, so yeah, it was, it was like Christmas in July, big time. 66-year-old billionaire financier Jeffrey Epstein was in court today for allegedly engaging in sex trafficking crimes. How serious are these charges against Epstein, David? Armed with fresh allegations from new victims, Authorities charged Epstein with child sex trafficking and conspiracy to engage in sex trafficking. Raids on his homes in New York and his Caribbean island uncovered hundreds of sexually explicit CDs and photographs, many of underage girls. It looked like the game was up. But Epstein pleaded not guilty and applied for bail, which was denied after the court heard from two victims, including Courtney Wilde. The fact that I had an influence on um, him remaining behind bars was just like so powerful for me. 
because um, if anybody knows that man the way I do, there was no way he was just gonna stop. He wasn't just gonna go home and not do that. He lived the high life, but died in disgrace. Just a month later, for the final time, Epstein proved he would not be held accountable for his terrible crimes, found dead by suicide in his jail cell. But how he managed that in such a place is a mystery. His shock death raising suspicions, he was a man who knew too much. It's incomprehensible to me how the American prison system could, with probably its highest profile prisoner, take him off suicide watch, remove his cell mate, um, not have the guards look in on him. Um, somehow the cameras are turned off. Uh, that's just incomprehensible. Uh, on the other hand, it's inconceivable to me that um, somebody could have penetrated the prison and actually killed him. Do you believe that if he had lived, that the justice system would have been able to hold him? Yes. No, absolutely. And the reason I think that suicide is plausible is that I think he knew that um, the jig was up. He was going to jail, and he was going to jail for a very long time. Today is a day of power and strength. Epstein's death did not silence his victims, who were invited to share their pain in open court, even though, with his death, the criminal case against him had to be dropped. I won't stop fighting. I will never be silenced until these people are brought to justice. Their focus now is on prosecuting Epstein's alleged co-conspirators. Glenn Maxwell considered the most prominent and cruel. I don't mean to sound sexist in any way, shape, or form, but I, I expected it from a man, but I didn't expect it from a woman. And, um, yeah, I think that's what hurts the most. Ghislaine Maxwell was a London socialite and daughter of disgraced media baron Robert Maxwell. On her father's death, she moved to Manhattan to join her boyfriend, Jeffrey Epstein. And according to lawyer Sigrid McCauley, soon became his full partner in the sex trafficking ring. Certainly, I would like to see her being held criminally accountable for what she did. Uh, she was an adult. She was an active participant. She facilitated it for years and years. She took money from it. If she is held accountable, uh, what is she facing? she would be facing something that would not release her from jail, in my view. So is it a matter right now that no one knows where Ms Maxwell is, or you know, is she hiding out somewhere? Or... Well, she's clearly hiding out. We don't know where she is. Um, maybe the prosecutors know where she is. Um, but um, uh, she can't hide out forever. The other person who has gone to ground is Jean-Luc Brunel, the French model agent who is also accused of sexual abuse and supplying Epstein with underage models who were conveniently housed in and trafficked from this New York apartment block, not far from the mansion. This apartment block, he just had women on tap. He had girls on tap. He had girls on tap. Jeffrey told me that he has slept with over a thousand of Jean-Luc Brunel's models slash victims. And you believe that? I do. We need to find these people, and we need to hold them accountable. We need to find Guilin. You know, the, the world should be looking out for her. She has no shame. She has no heart. She has no conscience. There is no stopping them. I promised you parrots. They don't ask questions, and they don't judge you. They just want to be loved back. Virginia Roberts Dufre has found freedom and shelter in Australia. She lives in far north Queensland, a world away from Jeffrey Epstein and his sex trafficking ring. I get the way of life and I prefer it here. I feel safer here. It's been the place that taught me how to live again. From 16 to 19, Virginia was at the mercy of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Entrapped by psychological chains she could not break, 
until they made this outrageous proposal. So I spent years with them being manipulated and abused and used and it wasn't until they told me, um, I want you to have a baby and we're gonna give you an allowance, but we also need you to sign a piece of paper that says this child does not belong to you. And you know, I, I wasn't a maternal person back then, but I was like, my womb is not for sale, but you cannot say no to these people. So I said, okay guys, no problem, but I need to finish off my education like you guys originally promised. Remarkably, Epstein agreed, paying for Virginia to study massage in Thailand. But as always, there was a catch. They sent me to a Thai massage school, but not only that, I had to be in Thailand to pick up another victim. I was supposed to bring another victim home. There, the killer dog. <laughs> Instead, Virginia met this man, Robbie. Looks over him on my shoulder, butterflies and She's it, that's the one. Straight off the bat, I just knew. And then I had to work my magic. <laughs> <laughs> His magic worked. After three days, he proposed. After 10, they were married. How could you both be so certain of each other after such a short amount of time? Yeah, that's the magical question you just know. Personally, I knew he was the one when he told me the people that are abusing you it's not right, and you don't have to live like that. And he was the first person to tell me that. That's when I knew. I knew I'd be with this man forever. Robbie brought Virginia to Australia, where they're now raising their three young children. Their love story stronger than ever, 17 years on. I just wanted to start my own life off. So I just, I was grateful. Just to get out. Just to get out alive and have a happy life. To get out alive, mm -hmm. what made you fear for your life? What was happening Just to you? Just the abuse alone. It was physical. It was very physical. She took the leap. She's the one I learned how to trust again. Mm. So she's my, she's my little warrior. Well, how would you describe this young woman? Brave, powerful, a survivor. Do we yet know how many young women are the survivors of Epstein? We don't really know. We don't know how many actually survive um, dying of drug overdoses and all the other things that, that happen to vulnerable children who suffer that kind of abuse. Uh, it, um, it, it, it's tragic for the survivors, but it, it is even more tragic for those who don't survive. Virginia's lawyer, David Boys, says amongst the well-heeled and well-connected here in New York, nerves should be running high. If I were one of those people, I wouldn't sleep well because it's going to all come out. And, um, uh, and you don't know when. Um, and, and you don't know how. But you've got to worry that somebody's going to talk. And certainly there is more legal action to come. There will be lawsuits against his estate. There will be lawsuits against the enablers, and hopefully there will be criminal prosecutions that will help vindicate them. Uh, so I think all of those avenues remain, and, and, and we are pursuing those literally as we speak. Jeffrey Epstein's death is not the end of the story. There are so many others who still need to be held to account and so many other victims suffering in silence. Virginia has set up a foundation to reach those wounded women and children and to ultimately stop sex trafficking. What is it that drives you today, Virginia? Is it the sadness? Is it the anger? It's the responsibility in my eyes. I mean, of course, there is sadness, there is anger, there are scars that will never heal, ever. Um, but to me, more than anything, it's a responsibility that I have. And I implore the community to please stand next to me and help me bring down all these bad people. And if you've got somebody in your life that's doing this to you too, speak out, stand up. The times are changing as they should be. And it's a good time to start holding these monsters accountable.